Okay, this is our first video in Global Studies 9 this year, and it's going to be focusing on some of the concepts and themes of Global Studies. And the first concept we're going to focus on is geography. Okay, so geography is a representation of the whole known world together with the phenomenon which is, are contained therein. In geography, one must contemplate the extent of the entire Earth, as well as its shape, its position under the heavens, and the lengths of its days and nights. Um, and that's a quote from Ptolemy, who is a mathematician, astronomer, and cartographer who lived in the 2nd century CE. This is actually a map that he created of the, of the then known world. Um, it's not the greatest uh, visual because it's old, um, but it's basically North Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia. All right, geography, definition for you. Study of where people, places, and things are located, the ways that different things relate to each other at specific places, and the ways that places connect with each other. So there's more to geography than just maps, okay, and where things are. Geography determines a whole heck of a lot of stuff, um, what people do, what they do, where, where they live, how, what they eat, all sorts of stuff is determined by their geography. Okay, you have two different types of geography. You have physical geography. Okay, that's the branch of geography that deals with the natural features of the Earth's surface. We're talking about rivers, mountains, lakes, um, man-made stuff like roads and things like that. And then you have human geography. And this is the science of, human, of the human species as, it, as to geographical distribution and the environment. Broadly, it includes industrial, commercial, political geography, and that part of ethnology, uh, which deals with the distribution and, and the physical environment, okay? Human and physical ge geography is the study of environment, people, and the resources they use. Geography determines the way we live, the adaptations we develop to survive, and the alterations to the environment that we make to make our existence better. Impact of human interaction with the environment has had mixed results, as I'm sure we're all aware. While human life has been improved and made more comfortable, the environment has been damaged in a variety of ways. Okay, maps, geographer's primary tool, portrays spatial patterns visually. Okay, the language of the maps, you have three major elephants. You have the scale, and that's the relationship to distance on the map to the actual distance. Large scale maps, they give a large representation of an area, tends to cover a small location, greater location, uh, greater detail. So a large scale map would be, an example would be like a map of the city of Syracuse. Okay, small scale sca maps, are a smaller representation, larger area, less detailed. Map of the United States would be a small scale map. Projection, we talked a little about this in class when we looked at the, the upside down map. Um, it's the rendering the globe onto the flat surface. How we do that often determines the, how we look at the things on the map. And then symbolization are simply the map legend. This allows you to understand the data on the map. We'll tell you whether you know, some, there's roads, cities, um, any kind of labeling that's on the map. Okay. So now there are, within geography, there are what are we call five different themes. Okay. And it's just basically five ways of looking at geography, five parts of geography. The first is location. That tells you where you are. Okay, the absolute location is the coordinates, the stuff you put in the GPS, you put Syracuse, New York in the GPS, it's going to give you coordinates in latitude, which are the lines that draw from east to west, um, that measure north and south on the map. So these are the latitude lines here, okay? Longitude are the other lines, these, these ones here, the up and downs, okay? This is longitude. Okay, and they basically do it based on another place, example, north, south, east, and west. Um, and they're drawn north and south, and they tell you how far east or west you are of the prime meridian, which is zero degrees longitude, um, which goes through England and parts of Europe and West Africa. Then you have relative location. Uh, it, it's placed based on the position of another place. Where is Nedro, or South O, in relation to Syracuse? Okay, that's how you what relative location is. It's how far are you from one place to the other, how close are you to another place. Okay. Then you have place. Okay, and what is place? Place is where we answer the questions, what kind of place is this? What do you think when you imagine China, Japan, Russia, Saudi Arabia? Okay. Places have both human and physical characteristics as well as images. Physical characteristics include the mountains, the rivers, the soil, beaches, wildlife, all that stuff. Okay. 
Places have human characteristics also. These characteristics are derived from the ideas and actions of people that result in the changes to environments, such as the buildings they make, the roads, clothing, food habits. Okay? The image people have of a place is based on their experiences, both intellectual and emotional. People's descriptions of a place reveal their values, attitudes, and perceptions. Okay, this is some examples. A place, destiny, the carrier dome, Onondaga Lake. These are all places within Syracuse and ideas and visuals of what we think of when we think of Syracuse. Okay, human environment. Human is the uh, geography, is the, the environment interactions. How do humans adapt and modify their environment? Okay, humans shape the landscape through their interaction with the land. Examples of that are dams. We cut down trees. We build canals. People depend on rivers for water and transportation. People modify their environment by heating and cooling buildings for comfort. People adapt to the environment by wearing clothing that is suitable to summer, the winter, rain, and shine. Okay, all places on earth have advantages and disadvantages for human settlement. One person's advantage may be another's disadvantage. Some like the excitement of large cities, whereas others prefer remoteness, living in the country. Environment is not just trees, spotted owls, and rainforests. Environment is a feeling. So, how have we adapted our, to our change start landscape? For example, in the Sudan, even though everything is seemingly barren, the land sustains farmers and nomadic herders. Peoples and animals have adapted to the hot, dry climate of Africa. Okay, an example, building a dam. Cutting down trees to make farmland on mountainsides. Okay. Fourth theme is movement. And that's simply the movement of people, ideas, and goods. You have immigration, which means you move into a place. Emigration, which moves out of a place. Why do people immigrate? You have push and pull factors. A push factor, something that makes you want to leave someplace. Pull factor, something that makes you want to go there. Okay. You should have learned about this in eighth grade when we talked to, when they did the whole progressive era and the, the mass immigration to the United States after the Civil War. Okay. And finally, you have region. Okay. And a region is a basic unit of study in geography. A region is an area that displays a, co uh, a coherent unity in terms of government, language, or possibility of the land form or situation. Regions are human constructs that can be mapped and they can be analyzed. And there's basically three types. You have a formal region, which is divided by a government or a boundary of some sort, United States, City of Syracuse, Brazil. Okay, these regional boundaries are not open to dispute. Therefore, physical regions fall under this category. In the United States, you got the Great Lakes states, everybody around the Great Lakes, the Rockies, the Rocky Mountains, all the states and people that live there. Then you have functional regions are those that are divided by a function. You have the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which you should have learned about during the Depression. United Airlines Service Area, they have a map. You get on a plane, it's going to tell you all the places they go. Newspaper Service Area, the places you can get a particular newspaper or a TV station goes to. Okay? If the function ceases to exist, then that region is no longer there. And then you have vernacular regions. They're loosely defined by people's perception. The South, the Middle East. Finger Lakes region, Central New York. None of these are specific because everybody's version of Central New York is different. Okay, Finger Lakes region, same thing. Okay, some places think they're part of the South, other places know you're not really part of the South. Okay, so all of that goes into region. Examples: Here's a map of South America. You can see the rainforest of the Amazon, and you can see the the other the the rain uh, dry zone here in Chile. Um, you know, and the, the pictures on the map of what's available in those areas. Okay, so hopefully you've answered the questions through Zaption, um, and we'll discuss more of this in class.